YouTube, it's me again. I wanted to post a uh, little short video on a project I'm working on just to, just to show you other BN20 users how uh, I do my work. Uh, just, just, this is just kind of a little quick rundown of my, uh, my process. I have a, an order for 21 separate images that we're gonna put on um, little uh, coolers, uh, little igloo, I think little igloo coolers or I can't remember what kind of cooler it is. Uh, but basically it was 21 files. The images were already created for me. Um, it's, uh, it's, so these, uh, it, it's for the dance team at the high school. Um, it's for the, uh, they're, they're called the maidens. You can kind of see the, uh, the logo there. Uh, but luckily the, um, artwork was already created for me. So all I have to do is put the artwork down on one large, I'm going to use one large artboard and making it as wide as the printer is. That way, once I load it onto the printer, uh, I can just have it start printing and then it'll cut out each each photo. And I'm just gonna do a, a contour cut, not a die cut. Uh, then I'll just cut them out individually and hand them, to, um, hand them over to them so they can start applying them on those little coolers. So these images are um, PNG files. They were already, like I said, they were already created uh, for me. So all I did was come in and I pasted them in here. They were a pretty large file, uh, so that's good. So that means they'll print out nice and clear. Uh, I had to resize them. We only need them about four inches wide. So these are actually, uh, this, I think the circle part, I'm gonna have to try to keep the same size, uh, but the name parts, they can't be any wider than four inches. So hopefully these will come in okay and print out good. So I'll have to make sure, because some of these names are longer than the others. Um, and we want them to fit on the, um, the cooler, uh, evenly and not look, you know, I want all the, I want all the, the, the circles to be the same. Uh, and then hopefully the, the names will, uh, just kind of wrap around on those coolers. This is the type of cooler it's going to go on. If you notice it's textured. So with this vinyl, sometimes when you stick it on textured things, it doesn't stick very well. So what I recommend is to stick the vinyl on there and then put a heat gun to it. Uh, if you run a heat gun over it, it'll form to the actual uh, cooler itself. You gotta make sure that the cooler, do, do this when the cooler is brand new uh, or at least very clean. Uh, you could wipe it down with some denominated alcohol to get that surface clean. Apply that sticker on there and then run a heat gun over it and just kind of smooth it over with your hand. Uh, careful to not to burn yourself, but maybe you might be able to put a soft glove on or something to kind of get it down uh, smooth. But that's, that's the type of cooler it's gonna go on. So kind of working through one of these, so I, um, over on the right, I copy and pasted from the email that was sent to me that had the uh, PNG files uh, onto e each individual layers, because I'm going to make this one large document. This document is 18.6 inches wide. Uh, that's about, that's the uh, print area on the uh, BN20, oops, sorry, that I can use. Um, so uh, I made it that wide, and then I'm just... Uh, I hid all the layers until I'm ready for each one, so I'll unhide a layer. There's there's a document, you can kind of see it's got a lot of white space around it, so I'll put a clipping mask around that to get rid of that, because if I don't, uh, when I put it next to these other images, it covers the image. See how it's, the space is covering, uh, it, it's covering where the, uh, it, it's, not, uh, it's not transparent. So typically what I do is I'll uh, create a clipping mask you just draw, you know, a box around it, the area that you want to show, and then you select both. You right click, make clipping mask, and so now it's got a clipping mask on it. So now it, it's the space it's hiding is smaller. Uh, so anyway, I, I can put it where I want, and then I usually lock all these layers so I don't accidentally grab something on there. I have a another layer that's got my pre-existing cut line on there. I made that cut line ahead of time. Uh, I'm not going to go through and how to do that, but I'm just showing you how I do it here. So I'm going to click back on this layer. I'm going to paste it down on that layer, and then I'm going to come over here and run it over this image the best best I can. Try to you know even it up. So this one it actually fits pretty good. I don't have to change the width for the names down here. So I'm just going to scoot it over. Yeah, probably just directly under this one because it doesn't seem like I can add too many 
I'm, I'm only able to add what one, two, three, four, five uh, per line. So we'll see how that how that works out. So I'm just gonna keep going through and doing this for each one of them. Unhide the layer, grab a box, crop it out, or you know, uh, not crop it out, but uh, clip it out so it doesn't uh, overhang over the other images. Uh, make it the size I want. Select both. Right click. Make clipping mask. Move it over here. Uh, I'm not doesn't have to be lined up perfectly because these are all just going to be cut out. Um, Control V is going to put down my cut line again. Let me zoom in on that and see if it's to size. Which, oops, sorry. I'd like to make it a good even spot there. So. If you look at this one, it's got extra space over here next to the, the, the letters. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll select it and then kind of bump it down. And then I'm gonna use my, uh, the uh, direct selection tool and just kind of grab those points a little bit and then bring them in, kind of eyeball it. So that's probably close enough. Let me bump that a little bit. And then this one too, I'm gonna select those, just kind of bring it in. That looks pretty good. So now I'll use the uh, the group selection tool, I think is what it's called, and then I'll come back over here, bump it up, and there it goes. It looks like it's uh, gonna work out pretty good. So I will finish the rest, and then I'll come back and print them out. Okay, so there it is uh, completed. I got the sheet set up, and I'm going to send it over to the printer. Uh, the printer I've got set up with uh, just the regular, you know, white, that's a 3M IJ35 vinyl. Uh, we'll send it over to print and we'll see how it goes. So just real quick, I'm saving it. I'm going to save as, and then I have these called the maiden decals. I'm gonna save it as a PDF uh, down here at the bottom. And then uh, once I hit save, it's gonna ask me Illustrator default, I always just change it to press quality and then do save as PDF. And then it's good to go. So now I can come over here into VersaWorks. Um, I'm gonna bring it in in my um, QB. Uh, go look for it. And find it. And then Charmers, Maidens, Cup Decals, Maidens, open up. It's coming in. So uh, clicking on the B. Oops. Sorry about that. Click it on there, so there it is in there. Um, I do have some wasted space down here at the bottom. Sometimes I like to throw in just little extra decals of stuff that I'm working on, but today I just really don't care about that. So I'm gonna uh, get media width. So it gets me the media width. I'm gonna center it on the media. Uh, go into my cut options. I'm just gonna leave those the same because it's just gonna be a con cut contour. It's not a die cut. Um, I am going to pick the paper quality. I always just pick glossy calendar vinyl. So now it's it's in VersaWorks. I'm going to go through and select the glossy calendar vinyl. I don't have a uh, specific media type for the 3M that I'm using, so I always just select the glossy calendar and vinyl. Uh, leave it at standard. Um, make sure I got my media width, and then I'll center it on the media. Um, it's good to go. As far as the cut controls, I'll cut controls. I'll just leave the same. I don't. I put in, um, anytime when you create a contour line, I try to go in and, especially if it's gonna be a die cut or a perf, perf cut decal, I try to make sure that all these corners are always round um, because if you don't, if they're pointy, uh, like that is, if they're pointy, then it's gonna give it a good, especially if it's die cut, it might rip right there and not you know cut right. So I always, uh, make the edges round so there's a smoother cut. So that helps when you're either doing perf cut or a contour cut. So that's just a little extra extra thing I do. So now when I go into VersaWorks and I have to set up my cutting, I don't worry about the speed. Uh, sometimes I'll select the cutting con conditions and then I'll slow the speed down uh, to sometimes five centimeters per second or 10 or you know even three, depending on how detailed the cut is. That's, that's the trick I find to uh, get good perf cuts. Uh, but for this contour cut, I'm just going to leave the same. So we'll just do that and then I'll hit print and just print one. It should be good to go. There it goes.
right, the decals are done. They came out pretty good, so I'll uh, hand them over to her and we'll see how they how they stick. Hopefully they'll uh, stick the way she wants them. Thanks for watching, guys.